Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and today we're going to talk about the Sword Breaker. Curious shaped blade. So we've got these tines on the back here, um, which are designed for a, another blade, a swordsman's blade, to land between them, and for you then to be able to control them, and I'll demonstrate that in a bit. But coming back to the name Sword Breaker, now, I'm not exactly certain where the name came from, but I think it has to be one of these stupid Victorian reinventions where they didn't fully understand the purpose of something, but they felt they had to catalogue it and give it a use and sound all knowledgeable. So they called it Sword Breaker. Now, that's not its true purpose. Its true purpose is to block and bind blades. So it's used as a left-hand dagger, a main gauche, and it has some features to it that are slightly unusual. The first thing that you would think is a main gauche well, it's used in the left hand and you use a rapier in the right. The thumb ring here, which is the, the hand protection, is on the wrong side of the blade. So that the edge down, any other main gauche, this ring would be on the other side. But what that tells you, in fact, is that the way you hold this blade is not with edge downward, as you would expect. It's with edge upward. So actually, the edge is now upward and these teeth are downward. That's one thing which is slightly unusual about it. Another thing which is worth noting is Medieval daggers, Renaissance daggers, very often you put them in a, a leather scabbard. This one has to have a wood-lined scabbard, just like a sword does. The reason for that is if you put it in a leather scabbard, the tines actually just bind on it and you can't draw the thing out. So it needs to have a wood-cord scabbard. Now the other thing about a main gauche is it is a left-hand weapon. So your rapier is here on your left hip and you can draw that, but that means that it's your right hand which is having to uh, draw the dagger itself, the main gauche. And so crossing over to do that while you're trying to do that is always quite complicated. So the main gauche is very often worn at the back here. And so that way, what you're able to do is just grasp it with your left hand, draw it, and you're ready. Then the other thing is, is the teeth. That is, quite frankly, a hell of a thing to make. It's, they're really quite difficult. And there's ways that you can make it easier or different ways that you can approach it. And so all of these things you see in museums, there's not that many of them, of uh, this type of dagger, but there's certainly enough out there to see that there are different ways of making them. Sometimes the teeth are actually um, filed, cut, punched uh, from the main body of the blade itself. Other times these teeth are in fact brazed on, and again you might think that brazing is a weak process, but if the joint is tight and, and good fitting, a brazed joint can be very strong, so actually the flanges on uh, Gothic medieval 15th century mace, for instance, you know, the, the really spiky, evil-looking maces. Uh, those, those are often brazed on as well. So these teeth can be brazed on, they could be forge welded on, they could be cut from the single blade itself. It all depends how the maker wanted to do it. These teeth as well, sometimes they're fixed, sometimes they're actually articulated, so they, they move. They have a little axle in there, a little pivot, and the teeth just fold down out of the way so that it makes it easier for the blade to enter, so there's a wider gap, but then it closes up as you try to pull the blade from it. So those are really the features of this kind of knife. Um, absolutely fascinating thing, and I've pondered about how they were used for a long time, so that's why we're here now. So I have my assistant Hob here, who's going to help with the sword play. In the interest of full disclosure here, neither Hob nor I is a sword fighter, so sorry about all the bumbling idiocy that is about to occur, but you're going to understand how the weapon works from this. So Hob's coming in for a thrust. I've now been able to lock it between the tines of the blade and I've bound it. So now I've bound the blade and simply by pulling, there's nothing Hob can do about it. So I can, I can twist it, I can pull it, I can even push it to an extent. So I've got complete control or reasonably good control over his blade. So it, it's, these tines are just a really clever little thing. This type of main gauche is called a sword breaker. Now, I don't think that there's enough meat in here to break that blade. The blade itself at this point on a rapier might be four millimeters thick, so somewhat over eighth of an inch. I can't see that. And simply, if you're trying to break that, you're having to apply force, and that amount of force is just gonna pull it straight out of a guy's hand. What is interesting as well is, and this is what I don't quite understand, if something works, you see lots of it and you don't see that many of these. So clearly, although as far as I can tell it works fantastically, there must have been something that wasn't quite right about it in a day-to-day -day fighting in the street kind of context, because you don't see thousands of these things, and you would expect to see that. 
So what is notable about these is something that I'm going to do now. I didn't allow the blade to enter between the tines because the angle between the sword and the dagger was not enough. And there it pops in. And so basically, if you miss your, your parry, that is where it may be a disadvantage to you because you were expecting that bind, but actually you now don't get it and you pull. So if the thing fails, it leaves you wide open if you are allowing for it. That leads me to suggest that they had some benefit and they had a reason and they were very interesting look, route to look at, but ultimately they must have been a failure because there aren't that many of them. And perhaps it's simply this, this failure, this occasional failure when you are relying on it to do something and it doesn't, that was enough to sink it as an object. Thank you. So I've now bound his blade. I can pull it, I can twist it. Straight <laughs> um, 